morning and welcome to this broadcast of Turley United Methodist Church and Grace United Methodist Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm Kirk Glasgow. Welcome. We're glad that you're here. Next few moments that we have together, we'll, we'll hear some hymns. We'll have a word on the lesson that's before us from John's Gospel. We'll pray together and then we'll close. And I pray that this time for you is meaningful and uplifting, and most importantly, that we honor and worship God. Our uh, opening prayer is from page 321 in the United Methodist Hymnal. It's the prayer for the Sundays of Easter, and today's the sixth Sunday of Easter. And so won't you join me in the prayer? The words are on the screen. Almighty God, you give us the joy of celebrating our Lord's resurrection. Give us also the joys of life in your service and bring us at last to the full joy of life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn is a great hymn written by Bill and Gloria Gaither. Because he lives, the words will be on the screen. Our text for today is from John's Gospel. It's John 14, 15 through 21. 
I'll be reading from the uh, New International Version, John 14, 15 through 21. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore. But you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and that you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too love them and show myself to them. May God add his blessings to the reading and hearing of his holy word. And so now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock, our redeemer. Amen. This text from uh, John's gospel means a lot to me. My mother was an orphan. Her mother died when she was 10 and her father died when she was 13. And she made it on in the world on her own. Later, when my sister Betty and her husband Charlie were killed in a car wreck, when I was just shy of my 20th birthday, they left a one and a half year old little boy named Drew and a three-year-old little girl named Carrie. And I can remember talking with mother 45 years ago this July and mother crying and just sobbing and calling them orphans, that they've become orphans. They're orphans now. Mother knew about being an orphan. She knew what it was like to be left out to be lonely. And now her heart was broken. And it was very powerful for me to see and hear her cry and say over and over again, so alone, so broken, just an orphan. And I remember that conversation as if it were today. Now I want to share something with you. There are times in our lives when all of us feel like orphans. Let me explain that. There are times when we feel helpless, when we feel alone, when we feel forsaken or maybe forgotten. Someone close to us is taken from us, or maybe we're confronted with our own mortality, or maybe for some reason we're experiencing some intense physical or psychological pain. At those moments, at such times, we may, we may feel that even God has forsaken us. Now, this is not a unique experience. People all the time feel hopeless, feel alone, feel forsaken. Even Jesus felt that way. You may remember that on the cross, he called out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Even Jesus felt orphaned at that moment in his life. And beloved, some people never recover from this experience of abandonment. There was a man many years ago named Tom Sutherland 
He was one of the men who was held hostage in Lebanon by terrorists for six and a half years. And it is said that uh, he was held in 26 different locations during his captivity. And some of his cells were cold and dark. They were just underground holes. And I imagine it's kind of like what we saw when they pulled Osama bin Laden, or not Osama, uh, Saddam Hussein out of his hole. And, and after 18 months of captivity, um, Tom was put into solitary confinement and that was in an underground cell. And he became so discouraged that he tried to commit suicide three different times by pulling a plastic bed, a bag over his head. But each time he stopped because he would think of his wife and his three daughters. What a horrible experience and how alone he must felt. Tom was a Christian when he was taken captive. He'd even been an elder in his home church. But after all that he experienced in Lebanon, he no longer believed in God. And when someone asked him why, he said, I prayed so many times and I prayed so hard and nothing happened. Hmm. That is not a rare experience. Some people never quite recover from these horrible experiences. Their sense of abandonment overwhelms them. I, I think that, that uh, my dad uh, never truly recovered from Betty and Charlie's automobile accident that we would go out to the cemetery at Memorial Day years later and he would cry just like it was the first time. And he would cry and then he would stop and he says, that's it, that's, that's all I can do. And we'd leave. And I understand that because in the loss of my child, I've gone to the cemetery and I've cried, and then I just got to stop. To use Jesus' metaphor from the text today, we feel like orphans. And people that never quite recover from these horrible events, they feel like orphans. They feel that no one cares for them. But praise God. Someone does care. God cares. God doesn't want any of his children to feel like orphans. Our lesson from the John's gospel is, is set at the Last Supper. Jesus is preparing his disciples for his betrayal and crucifixion. The coming events are going to be traumatic for his disciples, but he wants them to know they will not be alone. If you love me, Jesus says, keep my commands and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept it because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he lives with you and will be in you. And then he makes this powerful promise. He said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. These are beautiful words of reassurance. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. When I, when I think of orphans, I think of children like Carrie and Drew. Uh, this week I did several uh, consents for adoptions for children that were placed for adoption. They were orphaned. 
And I pray that they grow up and have a loving family that takes them and nurtures them and helps them grow and that the Holy Spirit will be with them as it has been with my family in times of loss. And when I think about Betty and Charlie's children, Carrie and Drew, they're now all grown up with families of their own. They never really knew their biological parents because of their age when they were killed. They were taken in by my elder sister and her husband and raised them with their other two children and they just fit together. They're a family. They call each other brother and sister, mom and dad. And Ann and Steve have raised two wonderful, God-fearing, productive members of our society. Carrie is running a nonprofit school for autistic children. And Drew is a captain of industry with more than 900 employees. Both of the children were loved and supported by their family and in turn was supported by the Holy Spirit. And that's what it worked out for my mother. She went on to get a bachelor's and master's degree. She raised four kids. Her first husband died right after the Second World War. She is a war widow. She then met my dad. They got married. She had two kids by her first husband, and then she had two kids with dad. Every one of her children went to college. Every one of her grandchildren went to college. Um, she was a school teacher and a productive member of society. And all through that, the Holy Spirit was with her. And so here's the takeaway for today. You and I, we need not live as orphans. There's someone who cares about us. I mean, we can be alone. And we can be scared, we can be fearful, but we're not orphans. I think there's probably nothing more traumatic than for human beings to be orphaned at a young age. I mean, what can be more tragic than being deprived of your family, your parents, their love? And, and there are some very fine people who have found themselves in this situation. If you, if you went to Google a uh, search engine and you typed in the term famous orphans, uh, you won't find my mother, but she should be there. But you'll read the names of many people, outstanding people from different fields of endeavors who were able to accomplish much in life despite the fact that they were orphaned. I mean, people like Eleanor Roosevelt. Her mother died from diphtheria in 1892. And the next year, when Eleanor was nine, her father, Elliot, died from the same disease. And Eleanor was raised by her maternal grandmother. I don't know, maybe this is what gave Eleanor her great compassion for people all over the world when she was first lady. And when she gave service as a diplomat, author, and writer, she was a person of great compassion for suffering people. And there's some other remarkable people who were orphaned, not by the death of their parents, but because of a breakup of their families, which resulted in them being put up for adoption. You know, Steve Jobs, Nelson Mandela, John Lennon, Andrew Jackson, and there's a whole group out there. Many people, many great people have found themselves orphaned. And so the lesson for today is this. There is power, real power, in believing that you are not alone in this world. What a powerful promise Jesus made to his disciples, and he makes to us. Although the disciples couldn't see it at the time, they couldn't imagine that in a couple of days he'd be put to death and that they certainly couldn't imagine that he would be resurrected on the third day or that he would send the Holy Spirit upon them 50 days later on the day of Pentecost. But everything, everything he foretold them 
came true. And brothers and sisters, hallelujah, it's still true today. If you're going through a difficult time right now, take Jesus at his word. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. What wonderful, fantastic, stupendous, great, good news that is. Remember, you are not alone. You are a part of the family of God. And he's right here with you. He's just a breath away through the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. So this I offer to you now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our call to prayer is open our eyes, Lord. The words will be on the screen. Let's, let's have a time of prayer together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come today praising your name, acknowledging that you're the creator, the redeemer, and the sustainer of all life, the giver of every good and perfect gift. We come before you, bow down, and worship before you, and we confess that we've sinned by thought, word, or deed, by, by what we've done and by what we've left undone. This, this past week, we have messed up things, Lord. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We're truly sorry, and we repent. And for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us and forgive us. There's a lot of need out there right now, Father, a lot of fear, a lot of people feeling alone. And we pray that your Holy Spirit just meet that person at their point of need and that they feel your presence, Lord. That maybe a, a, a breath of wind go by and it helps them remember some other time. Let them know that they're not orphaned. We remember those that are fighting this uh, disease right now, Father, and we, we pray for a vaccine, a cure. We pray for those persons that are in the hospital. We want to lift up our doctors, our nurses, our technicians, our uh, uh, orderlies, our ambulance drivers, our firefighters and police officers, all first responders, all those caregivers out there and nursing facilities. We lift up our president, Donald, our governor, Kevin, and our mayor, GT. And we ask that you give them strength, wisdom, and guidance for leading us through this time in our nation and in our city and county's history. Keep our hearts tender. 
Let us follow John Wesley's rule of doing no harm. We know that we'll be back together again soon. We lift up that unspoken prayer request, the one that's on someone's heart here today, and I, I ask you that you just be with them and that you meet them at their point of need. And I pray for these two small churches that are in their communities, serving you, Lord, and serving their fellow man. And we thank you for that. And we thank you for the opportunity to be your representative. We remember that perfect prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. And so now we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, I want you to have a good week. I want you to stay safe. Remember social distancing. Wash your hands a lot. Wear a mask when you go outside. And we'll be back together real soon. One more thing. This next week, if you're in need and the church can be of assistance, please call us and we'll do the best we can to help you. Phone number will be on the screen. So won't you receive the benediction? And now may the God of hope, the God of love, the God of peace, and the God of joy rest in your hearts now and forevermore. Amen. You're loved, and I'll see you next week.